subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel 7 versus the iphone 10s the newest kid on the block versus now the cheapest budget iphone you can get in the iphone 7 let's begin with a boot up test three two one and this kind of replaces that cheaper iphone entry from the iphone se so and you actually get a bigger screen for around the same price as that device was but you start at 32 gigabytes and uh, that's actually more than the iphone se that was about the same price for 128 gigabytes so every iphone actually has gone up a little bit including the 7 which beats the iphone 10s on the boot up test so just like the 7 plus beat the 10s max for some reason, these newer iPhones just aren't booting up as fast as these older ones did. All right, so let's quickly test Touch ID versus Face ID. Three, two, one, you can see the iPhone 7 very fast on Touch ID. You can actually pull this out of your pocket without even looking at the phone, and it goes through. So I think one of the things we miss about the older iPhones is Touch ID. I think Apple could have easily put this on the back of their iPhones, but they want you to go with all Face ID. So let's test out Face ID. Three, two, one. And you can see you have to swipe up three, two, one, and you got to swipe up. So you can turn on raise to wake so you don't have to use the power button like I'm using, but still it's a two swipe process. Whereas on touch ID, it's just simply hit the home button and you're in. So I think touch ID is still the faster solution. Although face ID does authenticate with apps and it is a more secure solution, but still Touch ID is faster, we're doing a speed test here. Okay, so who wants to take a photo on the lock screen? You know those moments when you just gotta pull out your phone and you gotta use this lock screen swipe camera? We're gonna test those right here. Three, two, one. You see the iPhone 7 a little swifter. Let's turn the phone off, turn it back on. And the iPhone 7 a little swifter again over the 10s. But it's not like a huge difference. It's probably not gonna make you miss that photo on either. But for real, the iPhone XS should be faster considering it's a brand new phone, but it's not there on the lock screen camera. Okay, guys, so we arrived at the application portion of the speed test. On the left, we have an Apple A10 Fusion chip, two gigabytes of RAM. This guy has PowerVR Series 7 XT plus six core graphics. Over here on the right, Apple A12 Bionic, four gigs of RAM and a four core GPU. Don't get it confused. A six core GPU is not as efficient and fast as this four core GPU on the 10s everything is closed out for the right everything is closed out for the left let's begin with calendar and you can see calendar is about the same let's go into calculator you can see a little bit to the 10s coming home let's go into clock you can see slightly to the 10s let's go into twitter and you can see twitter is first on the right let's go ahead and come over here and scrolling speeds do seem to be rather similar let's go into snapchat three two one and you can see Snapchat was slightly, like milliseconds to the iPhone XS. Let's go into Instagram. And you can see Instagram looks to be first on the right. Let's go into my page. And you can see right here, scrolling about the same. Let's go ahead and open up a photo. And you can see that looks like the XS. Let's do that one more time on a different photo. Three, two, and one. And you can see the XS a little bit faster in Instagram once you're actually in the application. Let's go into WhatsApp. And you can see WhatsApp first for the 10s. Let's go into YouTube. And you can see YouTube might be ahead for the 10s here. And let's go to trending. And you can see a little bit, like milliseconds to the right. Let's go into Amazon Prime Video. And it looks like the 10s might have to jump here again over the 7. No, but the 7 catches up and takes that win. Let's go into Jaws here. Similar stuff. Coming home, let's go into Amazon. And it looks like those apps seem to respond a little first to the touch here on the 10s, and the 7 caught up pretty easily though. Let's go into eBay. And you can see eBay is first for the iPhone 7. Let's go into Slither. Here's where the 10s should pull ahead over the 7, and it does there for that first Slither application. Coming home, let's go into Jetpack Joyride 3, 2, 1, and see which one could get into this game first. And it looks like we have a win to the 10s quite easily over the iPhone 7. So for gaming, this should be a big update. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2. And you can see the 10s should win this, and it does. And here comes the 7. So not bad for the 7, but the 10s is ahead here in the gaming department. Let's go into PUBG Mobile 3, 2, 1. 
And I will skip through this until we get to the actual match screen. All right, so we've arrived at the match screen and let's go ahead and start a match. The iPhone XS was actually first to the match screen. So you'll be playing PUBG Mobile first on the XS. You'll be in the game first over this one on the left. And it looks like you'll easily be into a match first. So when the graphics demand the GPU, here is where the XS becomes worth your money over an iPhone 7. But it's not like you can't play these games on an iPhone 7. You definitely can. The XS is just going to do it in milliseconds or maybe a couple of seconds, actual seconds faster than a 7. But you got to make up your mind if that matters to you. What about Antutu Benchmark? Because not everybody's going to be playing games on mobile that look like the XS. Let's go into a Geekbench. And Geekbench is first for the iPhone 7, and there is the XS. Let's go into Speed Test, and you can see Speed Test is open slightly to the XS. Let's go into iMovie, and iMovie is first on neither. It looked like about the same. So let's go into the camera and see which one can open the camera first. Three, two, one. And you could see from the home screen, at least, it looked like the iPhone XS opened that camera first. So let's go into the next application, which is going to be Video Shop three two and one and you can see that is the iphone 10s over the iphone 7 so that's about it for the single round it looks like the 10s won a lot of these tests but the 7 won quite a few as well the 10s seems to just be faster when it comes to the gaming row over the iphone 7 which in the basic task ios 12 keeps up easily on the 7 with the iphone 10s okay so here is my multitasking test we're going to just go through the iphone 7 to see if we get any reloads on any application and going into iMovie iMovie seemed to reload there speed test was good what about antutu benchmark that's a reload for the 7 and it held pubg mobile and we have a slight pause there for dead trigger jetpack joyride paused a little bit so, so far, not looking amazing, but still pretty good. You could see Slither had the reload right there for the 7. Let's go into eBay. That paused a little bit. You can see on Amazon, a reload there for Amazon. What about Prime Video? Another reload there. So the 7, for some reason, not holding these apps as well as the 7 Plus did in my prior speed test. You can see that YouTube had the reload. WhatsApp has the reload too. Instagram reloading here for the seven snapchat with a reload as well let's go into twitter so yes this two gigabytes of ram is not holding up too well here for the seven clock reloaded as well calculator was fine and what about calendar that looked okay as well but man most of those apps reloaded that was kind of shocking for the seven let's go into the 10s you can see that's got that camera it looked like it had the open camera again iMovie had to reload that what about speed test Geekbench, now for $1,000, this thing better not reload anything. And 2-2, two, two. let's go into Dead Trigger 2. Pause that a little bit. Jetpack Joyride, Slither. Slither had a Slither open. eBay, Amazon, Prime Video, YouTube, WhatsApp, Instagram, Snapchat. So, yes, it's definitely clearly ahead when it comes to the RAM management over the iPhone 7. Two gigabytes of RAM. Well, the 7 Plus had three gigabytes of RAM in my test. So two gigabytes of RAM versus four gigabytes of RAM is a definite upgrade from the 7 to the iPhone 10s. Okay, so let's do a quick internet speed test beginning with Apple.com. Three, two, one. And see, the iPhone 10s did load that first. Let's go into a page. The 10s a little bit ahead there. So I think the 10s is going to feel a little bit faster in most areas um than the iphone 7 but on day-to-day -day stuff i haven't seen a huge improvement let's go into bing but it looks like it's safari internet is milliseconds of a fraction of a second faster so if you care about that well then you're gonna like the iphone 10s for sure let's go into how about just go back to google three two one and you could see that's the 10s so the 10s definitely has faster wi-fi speed and lte connection speed over the iphone 7. all right guys so here we go with a video rendering test 1080p 60 clip at 45 seconds on both devices let's hit next at the same time three two one and see which one could compile and render this video first now to me it looks like the 10s is ahead but the 7 is right on its heels so which one can finish this first the 7 finished that first wow that's pretty impressive stuff. Let's go into iMovie. I have the same clip and we're gonna save the same video 
and see which one can export it first here just to make sure that last video test was not a fluke let's go into save video and let's put it in the highest 1080p resolution three two one and let's say, see which one can export this movie first so if the seven does this first too then you can basically say that video editing is not going to be a huge update here to the seven or to the 10s wow so the iphone 7 rendered that first too so now this does definitely test the cpu here in your video rendering and i don't care if it's just a 45 second clip this should have been faster on the iphone 10s and in both video rendering tests right there the 10s lost to the 7 that's pretty impressive for the iphone 7 anyway okay so here are your final and tutu benchmark scores and you have a whopping victory for the iPhone 10s, 297,217 versus 126,742. Let's go ahead and run a Geekbench test, and I'll be back when we are done testing out the CPUs to see what we get on this benchmark. Okay, so you can see on Geekbench, another crushing win for the iPhone 10s. and these benchmarks, all they really do is test the CPU to its fullest potential, and that's where you really see how the 10s is much more powerful, but when we go into the real world testing, you've seen even in the video rendering portion, the 7 was able to keep up and actually beat the 10s. It beat it on the boot up. The 10s was winning in the games, and I think that 120 hertz touch sample rate, you can definitely feel that on the day to day. The touch response for the 10s feels better than the 7, but this is not the only thing to upgrade for from a 7 to the 10s speed. You've seen the 7 can hold its own, so if you're coming from a 7 to a 10s, iOS 12 basically puts them at an almost equal performance and what you're really gonna see when you're actually using these phones. What you wanna come for is the screen upgrades, better battery life, and just being on a more modern looking iPhone. Other than that, the 7 is still a very serviceable and usable phone. That's why Apple still has it in the lineup. What are your guys' thoughts? Comment them down below. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, informing, enjoying, do me a favor, click that like button for me. And you might wanna be subscribed for the full comparison I'm gonna conduct